Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. This is a 1971 Chevrolet Black Cheval. A guy recently purchased and successfully got it running and drove it home 450 miles. From what we could tell digging through the build here, it was converted to a drag racing car sometime in the late 80s and then sat there for decades essentially until I purchased it. When I got it home and I asked you fellers and fellas, what should we you know, do with it? The majority of you said, well, obviously, you gotta, let's put it on the rollers. Let's dyno the thing. And I agree, we gotta see what this, you know, this old timer was cooking with. But there's some work we gotta do first before we back this up on the rollers. But well, we're gonna run this thing on the dyno and see what it lays down. We might be, you know, mind bottled. Right now through the end of February, you could get entered for a chance to win this custom built, one of a kind Gen 3 Hemi swapped 1982 Chevrolet C10. All you have to do is go to vicegripgarage.com, grab yourself some merchandise and every $5 gets you an entry. For official merchandise and the official giveaway rules, go to vicegripgarage.com and good luck. You know, you might could notice here, something's a little, a little goofy. She's a little saggy in the rear end. Well, I stole on the air shock, see, put them in the crew cab, wherever that's at, so a guy could get the PRI on that truck. So this has been sitting here without shocks in it. So we're going to go ahead and put some air shocks back in this, get that all dolled up. We got to address the fuel, make it happener. I want to put this back to as close as possible how the guy had this car before I got it so we could really see what he was running back in the 80s. We got to address the fuel. We'll probably scan on the sparkulators, do a general tune up, and just make sure it's safe and healthy. Then we'll put this thing on the roller and see what it lays down. I'm actually really fired up for this. So let's get this up in the air. And I got some air shocks around here somewhere. We'll pop them in quick. Great boxes. Hits! Yeah. Got a flat wheel up here in the drinker side. Ain't got no wind left in it. Remember brand new tires too, huh? I don't know. Valve stem maybe. You know, there's a rundown bar across the railroad tracks, you know? And I got a table for two way in the back where I sit alone. So what a guy did is picked up some triple coilover, multi-angle adjustable coilover shocks made out of Iranium and Tornadoes for the rear. No, nope. I literally searched Evil Bay and sorted by cheapest first and it came up with this thing. Sure, I think it's a man row or something like that, but it looks similar to what came out of there-ish. So we're gonna pop this thing in, should do the job. We only need like maybe two inches of lift-ish because we're gonna be swapping the tires on this anyway before we get it on the dyno. I just don't trust these. We're gonna put the old slicks off of the independent Chevelle on it, which is a much smaller diameter. So we're gonna gain a bunch of clearance there. Any hoops, let's get these in. Bottom just slides on here nice and easy. And then up top, we're gonna get her up in here. Oh, I think I got some heart. Oh, I did. Got some hardware up there. I'm gonna get some new heart. This is not you know, quarter inch, no. We'll go to 5 sixteenths and put real bolts up in here and uh, serrated washers or something, something. I don't know. And then get this knocked in here. The kit comes with new, these things, but there's nothing wrong with that one. And I still got the, still got the nut for it. So we'll just use that one, I think. Might shoot a little lithium grease down here to keep the 
down, even though we can't hear it because, you know, pipe later. Hello? No one home. Another thing I just remembered is I wanted to address all of the broken washers, loose bolts, all of this stuff back here. Look at that stuff. Just, you know. So let's get all that tightened up, kind of nut and bolt check this thing before we get it up, start really twisting on her. I never really laid in her all the way, but man, this thing is rowdy. I'll tell you that. I also got this weird thing going on where the drive shaft is bumping against this. And this already looks like it's over, so I need to maybe look at the trans mount. Something going on there. It might be just a little bit shifted causing that issue. I don't want anything to go wrong on the rollers because it could just compound the issue and really tear up stuff here. Found some 516 hardware here. And I'm going to use a washer and a hex lock nut. I don't want these scooting around on a guy. I've got some pretty ambitious and wild ideas for this Chevelle. I'm going to share with you after the dyno run here, and I think you guys are going to like it. Uh-oh. Never see that again. Easy now. Go. Start. Go on. Go on there. Can you just... Can you just... There. Okay. Oh, I found it. Oh, boy, there's a lot of hardware in there. <laughs> nice. Next 12 builds. Done. Okay. There we go. How can a guy get all this stuff in here? Like this? Is this how you do it? I don't think, I don't think that's working. Oh my goodness. What in? Time out! What is going on? <sighs> Never seen such a Mickey Mouse show. Two little bolts. That's all we got. <sighs> I am in the mud. Okay, battery's busted. Ow, finger pinch. Battery's busted again. Oh, lost my ankle. I've, I'm about had it up to here. Do I gotta go this way? Oh, for heaven's sake. Then I come over here. This, I, okay, lunchtime. You know, sometimes the easiest jobs are just get away on a feller, you know. Just keep your feet moving. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There. One in. That was easy. Piece of cake, you know. Is this the right? What size is that? This must be the right one. When in doubt, grab nine wrenches, you know. There we go. Suppose I didn't put the air nozzle the right way now. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think my brain must be firing up. This one seems to be going remarkably easier. You know what I mean? Good. Okay. Hope these work. There's not really a particular application. Of course, there's all the new fancy stuff you can get for. Oh, great. 
for the rear ends, but I wanted to keep her simple. Like I was saying, let's try to put it just how it was back in the day. Let's see what this puppy can do. Okay, hand, work. I need you to work. Listen to my brain, to, the, to my hand. Okay, there we go. Good. All right, finish this one up. We'll start running some lines. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Get on there. There we go. This guy, springy, curly washer thing. Then this guy. I think that kid even came with little clips. I could try to mount it up in the frame, you know, but I don't know. We'll find out in a minute here. We're getting the eggs before the carton. Or whatever the saying is. There's my SMV sign. Why is it by the welding plug? Hmm. in. Hmm. So there's, oh great, just lost the best part. Here's what we got in the kit. We got some tubulator, just in a big roll. You got some fittings, one of which I just lost. You got the Schrader valve, and then this is the equalizational port. See, right there. So we got to run a line from here, up to here to a T, from there up into the said T, and then from that, into the juicilator, this guy here, and of course that's got to go on A bodies right there. All you got to do is plop one of these rubber stops out for the LP and pop it through right there. So that's going to be the plan, anywho's. And I think it even, yeah, so it has these little clippy things and on some frames, oh see like right there, there's one in it already. If I wanted to, I could draw another hole right here, you know, or maybe up here. I'll be dipped. Look at that. See? See what just happened? And I got another one over here that I could do the same thing to. So we're going to go ahead and do on that, I think. Now, if this is anything like brake fittings, you want to be sure to put the rubber o-ring on first. Then forget that you put the fitting on, you know what I mean? And then redo it, basically. I see a problem here, and I kind of knew it was going to happen. See, a guy thought we might not have enough line, and that is the truth. That is happening right now. Unless I just hung this here which I don't really want. I'm kind of trying to do this right. Settle down. This, it's a, you know, I can, it's a pretty nice car. I'm just trying to run this up and around because we may have to eventually, for some reason, take this fuel tank out and put a fuel cell in. And I don't want all this stuff in the way. See what I'm saying? So I'm going to do the right thing and cut open another airline shock kit thing that I've got for the crew cab and chop that one up so that one's too short. <laughs> That's a great idea. Final part is the airy uppy thingy. Snag that through there. Run this on. Now I can go fire up the compressor, build some wind and that will raise that front wheel first otherwise it'll look Kitty Wampus, you know, and then we'll shoot some wind back here and see if these are actually going to lift. They're pretty extended, got to be honest, without anything in them yet. Kind of got me a little worried, but don't panic yet. Okay. There. 
even fix the gas cap. Hmm. All right. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. Air compressor turned on, I guess. Don't forget to turn them off in the nights, guys. Them can run all night long if you blow a line. Them belts get the licorice, start throwing lava all over the place. Next thing you know, you got a shop fire. Oh, I'm way over. I'm hot. How'd I overshoot it that far? I don't know. Yapping at the mouth. You watch that tire now, let me know what happens. Yep. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's really going to town. I wonder how many leaks we're going to get. We got enough clearance? Well, I'd say so. Boy, that's what we needed on the way home, wasn't it? We fought that and fought that. Oh, yeah. Sweet. I don't think we got one lick of a leak either. I'll be dipped. Well, guys, been running a professional leak down test here on the air shocks. It's a six part system and it consists of this. Yeah. It ain't leaking, looks like. So we're going to lift her back up and we got to start going through all this hardware. Going to get the impact out and just, you know, just shake the teeth out. Probably six oogadoogas front to back on this thing. Something I remembered we got to keep an eye on. The rear main seal on this thing is shot or it's leaking really bad. I shouldn't say shot shot. But I had the crew cab under here for storage. The whole hood looked like murder she wrote with every juice you could think of. And just from cleaning that up it's already dripping on the floor. But we could take a couple rips on it. But we've got to remember in the future we got to seal this thing up. Anywho, back up in the air, tightening hardware. So I think the issue here, the chunk just fell out, but he's got lock washers on here without a washer underneath of it. So when you tighten these nuts down, it's just splitting that open like that, cracking it. Then these are lined up precisely, whatever brand this is. I don't even know how he got that, that in there because that's just, oh, nuts completely missing on that one. Again, I don't know how he got it in there because of that. So this could get pretty interesting, but these essentially aren't doing much right now because the axle is going to wrap around this anyway. Be twisting and putting all the pressure on this. So let me just stare at this for a few minutes, see if I can come up with a plan. I think we can get new hardware in the rear, but the forward part is pretty concerning. Well, I think you guys formalized the plan. We haven't used the gas axe in a while. So we're going to get the lightning staff out and just tuck this thing into shape. What I mean by that is we're going to try to delicately just round the edges of the piece of metal that's hooked to the angle iron to the homemade plate thing that the bolts are crooked into that the nut is jamming against said homemade plate thing up to the angle iron. And the hope is we can actually get a socket in there, some sort of hardware, and replace all that. Also, in the trailing arm unit that hooks into the homemade thingy on the bottom, that bolt is too short. I'll show you here in a second. It only has a split washer on it again, and that's flayed open. Also very loose. We need to get a longer bolt in there. If I pop that puppy loose, then we're going to have... It's, this is Domino's. Not the pizza. The theoretical mess is what we got. 
got to noticing this. I'm actually not tightening anything. It's just spinning. There's a broken lock washer in there. No washer over here with too short of a bolt. These bushings are completely hammered. We'll ignore the bushings. I can rejuvenate them with some tss, tss, bring that around. But I think we got to get something better into this bent up welded pipe collaboration here and then get actual washers on both sides of this here unit here, here, and here. And this is that corner I'm talking about. We need to just, just kiss that a little bit, make a little bit of room in there. Fixing rear end. Okay, here we go. Boy, I haven't fired this thing up in a while. I don't know what I what I got settings at. This is not a fuel tank that leaks right here. Tip is shot. Easy, easy, but faster. Get the popcorn out. Trying not to take any of the paper tie and the stick welding out of it. That ought to do. No, nope, probably not. But it's what we got. Baseline. Keep the symbol splashy. Take it for a walk. I want to take the hardware off back here and they're just snapping right off. So, guys, going to step her up to grade eight. Some washers and uh, lock nuts on these to over budget but we know this is gonna hold letting this cool up here she got a little spicy but we'll snug this down I want to try to get this gap the same on both sides so I'm just gonna bring this up leave a little bit of a gap get these out snug these up snug those up snug this snug 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 torque at least that's the plan Raining cats and kittens all of a sudden. Slowly getting there. Oh yeah. Yep, yep.
<laughs> there we go. And then So yeah, this is how it was as a reminder and then this is what she's looking like now. And we took away the big gaps. This bolt bent a little bit, but not too worried. This is way better than what was in it, this grade eight stuff. Not really sure. This might have had quite a bit of movement, you know, for the wheel hoppuses. But anyway, gonna repeat that over here now on this side. This front is tricky. I can see why these were loose and stuff. See this bolt's kinda got a bam in there too. But it's hard to get any wrenches in here to make anything happen. So it's just a lot of time consuming farting around on the front side. So I'm gonna start up here this time instead of in the rear. Get this done nice and snug, then get the back. Well, got her all finished up here. New hardware throughout. These bolts here I pulled out. Now the rear end's just tired, needs to be refreshed. And the bushings were so bad and then the bolt was loose. It was sawing through the bolt right here, about ready to go, but now we've got our washered up and locked nuts on both sides. I'm gonna keep that in mind, got some ideas for the future, but for now, everything's locked, bolted in, nice and tight. We can move on to tires and the fuel will make it happen here. Well, fellers, truth be told, it went ahead and then bees about a week later, but I got the Chevelle back up on the rack. We're gonna get after it again. Had to really dig into that Monte Carlo LS swap, but I've got a few days to get this ready for sick week, so we're gonna jump back into this thing. Rear end's all tidied up. We got the air shocks in, all the hardware's in, all that's looking great. We're gonna start moving the attention to under the power barn there. Need to change spark relators, need to swap the fuel, make it happen, or check things over, do all that. Might even change the oil quick. So I'm gonna run into the town and grab some parts, and then we'll get after this thing. Moses sandals, that's a good looking truck right there. Just a reminder, there's only a few days left to get entered for a chance to win this truck, the Hemi half here. All you gotta do is go to vicegripgarage.com, grab a forehead awning, back rag, whatever you can. Every $5 gets you one entry for a chance to win this rig. Ends at the end of the month, so you've only got a few days left. Don't procrastinate. All right, let's run in. Grab some parts, get right back to the shop. Hopefully by them, the pipe relators is cooled down. I just pulled her in on the ramp there. Well, we're back. We got some new spark relators and lighting hoses. We're gonna to get to that in a minute. There's three things we basically have to address here now that the rear end and everything is done, is fuel, ignition, and also tires. I don't wanna run these old sportsmen's. They're weather cracked. Who knows what condition the tube is in. Losing a tire on the dyno, <laughs> Oof, not good. We also don't want to run this thing out lean and we don't want to run it too rich. So let's jump in and address this fuel make it happener currently on Liberty. So if you remember when we picked this rig up, it had a new fuel make it happener right out of the box, kind of loosely bolted up on the intake there. And the reason was the old big dog Holly double pumper was pouring fuel everywhere, it was in bad shape. So that feller just put this one on to move it around, I think was the intention. I ended up using that to get it home. However, it's significantly undercarbed and it's just not the right setup. Now I wanted to rebuild the old Holley double pumper because that's what the old timer had on this rig. And I really want to run this rig as close to what it was back in the day. However, that carb is shot. It's pitted and galled and uh, the, I mean, it's in really rough shape. The jets are stuck in the thing. The sight glasses are rotted off in it. I'm gonna have to drill get those out. It's just, it's too far gone. So I'm gonna throw that up on the shelf as a momentum, mo mo moment, momentary switch, memory. Memory? Maybe that's the word. And then put on something else that's gonna work for us. So here's what I grabbed. So this, my friends, is hopefully gonna be our answer here. This is a 750 CFM race carburetor. You'll see there's no choke accessories or anything like that. This is just for strip or race use only. This is a brawler. They're a really economical carburetor. And when you look at the scope of things, they're actually really affordable. And I've had super good luck with these, meaning 
92.3% of the time out of the box, you bolt them on and they are dialed in. You don't really have to make many changes, or at least in my case. So we're hoping for the same. I do have a box of jets if we have to do anything different, but I'm really thinking not. We'll probably set the idle screws. This is four corner idle setup. It is a double pumper. Dial this thing in with the vacuum gauge, and this is gonna provide enough fuel to make sure that that 406 small block is fat and happy and we don't cause any damage on the dyno today. So let's take the old off and get the new on, figure out how to whoop, whoop. Yeah, looks cool too. Moses sandals. Well, you guys have seen me do this about 58 million times. Just gonna throw this old guy off. I think we'll keep that spacer in there there's some reason that guy added that spacer. I don't know if it's heat soak or power band or RPM or whatever, but I'm going to assume there was a specific reason. I'm sure he was looking at ET or 60 foot or 1,000 foot or something that he's got that Edelbrock spacer in there. So again, we're going to leave it. We're trying to run this as close to old school as possible. I just want to see what this car actually runs. Spring, pop the throttle off. This is a vacuum secondary. We're gonna be moving to a mechanical secondary. So whether it wants to open or not, you're getting the four barrels. You know what I mean? It's just like flipping the lid on the air cleaner. Automatic horsepower. All right, I need a screwdriver, ratchet, open end. This should come off just fine, 10-4. Yeah. Now this guy here is a 8508. It's also a 750, but it's a vacuum secondary and it's got the digital choke on here. This is a fantastic fuel make it happener and it's gonna work for a lot of applications out there. It's gonna go right in the box. The other one came in and I'm positive we'll reuse this, but we don't want the choke interference and we want the mechanical secondaries on this old rig, because we want all the horse torques now. Wow, stayed clean at least. The bad boy brawler going on. There we go. This should. Nope, it does not. It's longer. Okay, no problem. Don't panic. So the fuel supply on this is just a little bit short. You can see right there. I'm gonna do what the old timer did is just cut it to the middle, put a rubber hose in there and that'll give us some, just a bit of tie on there. That'll bolt right up. Over here, we shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Just need to put a ball stud back on this right about, eh, maybe we'll go there. And then hook that uh, spring back up down here and basically swap for swap, put the air cleaner stud back in, done. And we're gonna move on to sparkulators in a minute because we're gonna wanna bring this to temp and we'll do some basic adjustments and see how it's running. But let me get this bolted on and make that adjustment. So instead of miscellaneous mismatched hardware found on the side of a road or I don't know where this came from, we're gonna move to some new hardware to hold down the fuel make it happener. I'm going to be using these hex lock 5 16ths with all the right washers. I want to make sure we get this thing seated nicely. And with the big vibration and the old thump stick in this thing, she's shaking around. There goes one of the nuts. Never see that again. And I don't want these to back off. You know what I mean? Great. Got to crawl around now like a billy goat. Found it. It was right here, actually. Ran into a slight detour here. One of the studs, where is it? This little guy right here. Didn't like taking the new lock nut and or it was already on the way out. But anyway, this just pulled right through this old spacer. There's just no threads left. And if you didn't know, the course on one end and fine thread on the other. So instead of drilling and tapping that, it's already wallered out. I want to try to keep it the same size. So I'm just going to finish taking the threads out with a drill bit over here 
and then I'm just going to run a 24 thread bolt all the way through and nut it on the back side and that way it's all the same hardware all the way around this thing in case we got to pull it off make any adjustments stuff like that all right easy but faster but also take it easy Ooh, I should have put some tape over that. Nothing in there. We're good. <sighs> Boy, she was running rich. Then... Can we, I think we can, just do this. Sure enough, needs to be a little longer though. Let's find a longer one. But on the mean wilts, we can put these back on. Tells me the old carb's been off this old buggy. Many, many, many times. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. Okay. Fuel make it happener is on. It's looking good. Used a ball stud kit from Edelbrock actually. It's a nice little kit that has all the flavors. A little bit of lithium grease so that doesn't get sticky or anything like that. It's got nice throttle action. Be sure to torque these down in a cross sequence. And always check your throttle action after every one. Make sure it's not binding up either in your intake or your adapter there. Now I can move on to this guy here. I'm going to disconnect this, pull it out of the car, cut that, splice a piece in, put it back in. Whoa. We're not running a ton of fuel pressure, but a guy did go on ahead and let's, let's flare these out. You know what I mean? And uh, make sure we're not gonna have any fuel leaks or fuel fires. That would be, that would be nice. Fuel lines all finished up with the old bendo matic in here. Guy could actually get another fitting and put a fuel gauge under here if a guy wanted to. Probably a pretty good opportunity. This should work just fine for now. Moving on to the sparkulators here. Now in the rig now we got the Enjikas, the burrs of the sixes I believe. Didn't like them. Didn't like the plugs or the heat and rage. Going back to the good old AC duckle here. Gonna start with the 45. See how that runs today. We might end up with a little bit colder plug. Um, but I just, I don't know the car well enough yet. Might take a few sets to get her dialed in then whatever works good. We'll grab 36 million dozen of them. But I'm gonna pop these in quick and we'll also scan on the other ones. All right, sparkulators are in. Fuel make it happener seems to be done. I'm gonna go ahead and run the fuel pump. We'll check for leaks in here, see what happens. I had to make a custom socket. It kind of looks like an O2 socket. And then I also bent up a custom wrench, put a kink in her, thinned her out a little bit. These headers are an absolute bear getting the sparkulators out. I'm gonna keep those in the car though and uh, whenever we need to do work on it, we'll have them. Just like independence, I guess. So anyway, let me flip the fuel on. Let's see what we got. Pump is on. Fill on the bowls. Yeah, there we go. There comes the pressure. Initially, those floats look like they can come down a little bit. Plenty of pressure. Not seeing any leaks. Knock on balsa. Well, let's go ahead and fire it. Get some heat installed. Once it's warm, then we can start adjusting that a little bit. Oh, I got the seat all balled up in here. A couple shots. Idle in it. There we go. 
it just stayed at a little idle. Let it warm up. And that's a Flowmaster FX. And we went to a three inch. starting to need to adjust our air fuel. It's got heat in it. See how it's starting to sputter out? Clean it up. probably bring it up even just a smidge on that but we'll see how if it bogs or not uh, when we get into the four barrows um, gotta get a vacuum gauge out now and we're gonna pull vacuum on this and we're gonna do four corner idling they do not need to be the same I hear a lot of people say that you know they have to be exactly the same on your idle mixture screws nope they're they are whatever it is for the greatest vacuum the engine pulls and that's the science that's happening in here that we can't see so i'm going to get a vacuum gauge on this fire back up we'll go around and just do quarter turns and it's going to take a bit with four corner but we're going to try to get this to where it idles nice we don't want to be felling plugs idling all right that vacuum gauge is plugged in up front there let's fire this back up see if we can get it to idle Whoops, main power, going hot. Ignition one, two, six, and 12. Wow, only makes 
say. Lego town. I really love leaning over these fans. Nice and safe. Like that. Sounds good. Might be a little fat on the back end. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. Well, I think surprisingly, it's a little fat on the secondaries, which I haven't really had that happen with the brawler. But that's okay for today. We want to be fat and happy on the rollers. We don't want to run this thing lean. Plus, we're still figuring out speculators. Didn't build the engine. I don't even really know what compression we're running. So I think this is good enough for now. We're not really going for peak horsepower numbers today. We're just trying to see where we're, what are we working with? You know what I mean? Is it flour, tortillas, or corn? You know what I mean? Okay, speaking of corn, that has nothing to do with the next subject, tires. These sportsmen's, these Mickey Thompson sportsmen's, what are they, SS's probably, look like it from the tread pattern. Dry rotted, super old tubes, not gonna work. I'm gonna bust those off and we're gonna put on the billet specialties and I believe they're Hoosier, yeah, they're Hoosier radials that I used on Independence last year on Sick Week. And we'll use that on the rollers. I know they're good, it's good rubber. They have a less chance of coming apart. You know what I mean? So let's get the car up, get those other tires on. It's gonna look goofy. These are 29s, they're really like 26s. You know what I mean? But I keep them clean. All right, so Keith from Mule Town Dino came over to the shop here. I actually met him 
Boy, I was like three or four years ago on Power Tour, and I've been on this exact roller several times. Uh, a Rocky Chevelle and a few others, a couple Chevelles actually. This is my third, third or fourth Chevelle on this machine. He's strapping her in. We're also setting air pressure. We're gonna run the tires a little bit higher. We don't want any squish on the rollers, so we're probably gonna run those about 30 pounds or so, and do a couple light pulls. Just check everything over, make sure it's safe. Make sure the engine's happy, make sure it's in the rollers nice. Make sure there's no weird drive shaft vibrations or anything like that. And then we could start stepping it up a little bit. He was on the way back from a show and I said, hey, might as well swing by the place and throw it up on this. And he was kind enough to swing by. He travels all over doing this stuff. It's a really nice mobile setup he's got going on here. How long have you been doing this? 2017 so 17 that might have been the first year I met you then Probably, yeah. yeah I got you know lucky I emailed motor train power tour guys and said hey can I do this show you know pretty much right after I built it and I designed built this whole setup and so that was kind of my first big break getting exposed yeah there, so. yeah you always have a line at the shows <laughs> it's pretty wild it's pretty fun you going this year again uh yeah I'm in the works working to deal with them so I'm nice. planning on it that's great. That's a lot of fun watching. There's, you get all sorts of everything on this thing. Look at this. He's got it recessed in nice. Works great. Well, we're almost ready to take a few burps out of here. If you guys want to have some fun, you can post your guests down there. And then after we run, after the final run, you can comment again how close you were, I guess. But don't be like under a thousand. Well, clearly. You know what I mean? It's a 406, we know it's higher compression, has a single plane intake, 750 carb, uh, Excel ignition, it's not on points. Um, pretty high lift cam, we know that. It's got rockers, roller rockers. Uh, you know, horsepower a cubic inch, I think that's pretty reasonable. We, there's also the debate of crank horsepower versus wheel horsepower. So make sure you clarify now what your guess is. But let me climb in, take a hit, and see what we got. Okay, so here's the plan. Keith ran me through everything. We're gonna run at about 2,000 RPM. He's gonna calibrate the machine. And then once we get the thumbs up, we're gonna take just a nice short hit. Just make sure we're getting good data, everything like that, everything's safe. And then we'll start making some progressive pulls. Probably 4,500, 5,000. Then we'll start creeping the way. I never touched the red line here. That's at 65, and that's what the old timer said it would do. So we're gonna... We're going to find out here in a minute, but uh, it's already got some heat in it, so I guess we'll uh, start turning the rollers and we'll get some data and see what happens, huh? Yep. All right, you ready? I am ready. All right. Some sort of issue with the transmission. It's def I think it's a manual valve body. I thought I was in third. We may not be getting first out of this gate. So I'm gonna have to probably is there a way I can like progressively do this shifting and stay in the throttle? Uh yeah, so you can stay in the throttle. That's why I was saying like normally if you have a speedo like keep going until you're around 45 and then we know you're in third and then we get to 2000. So I might have to be like 3500 maybe. Yeah, so you probably have to really Okay. Line it out so we know that you're in third and then let it back down to 2000 so we can do the calibration and then you can okay all right we're trying it again here we go Okay. 
to 200 RPM ish? That was about 5,300, yeah. 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 230 horsepower, 294 foot pounds. 230 horse, 294. It's pretty good. It's looking pretty flat on the graph. Is it? So, were we, you like full in the throttle or were you like three quarter? Three time? quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, to get the best data, we gotta have like an on off switch, ideally. Or like okay. at least when you roll into it and then it's full. Okay. Let's, um, let's go 55, maybe a little bit more. Okay. And I'll really lay into her this time. All right, here we go, guys. story for you know and probably know, most old cars small box my 71 chevelle with a built 355 it made 240 through a turbo 400 yeah pound in the ground now these are definitely not equal what i had and, and what yeah. you have but it's you know the numbers are usually lower than people think on the older style motors sure through the turbo 350 you know yeah 12 volt you know all right well i think it's my eyes are burning. It's fat. Yeah. It's, so, I'm. There's a little bit of oil burning too. That's um. Is it smoking? Smoking or? Just when you were either when you were getting on it or getting off of it, I, I could smell like a little bit of strong oil, oil smell, and then yeah. it went away. I'm ready to wind this thing up. See if it hits 65. So. How's your trailer bottom doing? Good. Oh yeah, we're all good. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so one thing, I forgot to hook the vacuum advance up. That's probably one of the reasons our curve is so flat. Also, we're going to play its timing. It was at 32 degrees, which really isn't that much for a small block Chevy. I ran up to 37, 38 before. But we pulled two degrees out, and we're going to run it again just for a sanity check. If we do see it go down, then we'll maybe go to like 34 or 35. And a little more rip them and see what... Uh, see what it makes then but we're making progress all right so this time we're gonna go all the way to 6500 see what happens and then we'll make some adjustments, maybe. We'll see, we're starting to lose light. Six thousand. Yeah, it sounded like sixty two hundred it would start breaking up a little bit or yeah. is that the rev? I think that's the rev. Yeah. Two hundred and thirty five or two hundred and thirty three point five. That's just what it is. Yeah, same number. All right, well, first of all, it does not rev to sixty five hundred. You could see at uh, where's your where's the ripums on this? Uh, I took it off to go to speed, let me change it back. Okay. Uh, 6,000 massive valve float, but well, you can see here it's 5,500. So we're gonna want to shift probably 5,000. Give yeah, you it time. still have decent power out to here. I mean, most cars, you know, your power band, you want to rev it out so that when you downshift, you don't you drop know, in drop the too curve. much in the power. But I mean, this is such a giant flat curve. I mean, it really yeah, yeah, it's it's weird how it doesn't have a normal kind of progression. It's just flat. So. The other efficient story we got told, this is not a 10 second car, nor did it ever pull the wheel, ever, in the history of America. Uh, this is a 14 second car at best, most likely based on this information, but that's okay. I'm happy with that, it sounds great, it drives great. 
Uh, the old timer, you know, back in the day, did what he could with the double hump heads and bored it out and did all this stuff in the camp. And then was trying to make it up with the rear gear and that's why he went to the tall tire. Because we were at, here I'll show you this. We were only at like 80 miles per hour when it was really rolling over, 85 maybe you know up in there yeah by the so, time you get to 85 miles an hour you're only making 100 horsepower yeah <laughs> so yeah that's why he had that big old 29 inch tire it's kind of hard to see that's the, you know it's clearly a lot smaller so we're gonna have to do some math magicianals figuring out how we're even going to get across the beams with you know if we'll say 300, it's probably not even 300. I, mean, I was going to say, I don't know for a 14, 15 second car what the mile an hour usually is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. I mean, that's what we're... Yeah. So now we know, though. So um, we can make some improvements. That's a good thing. Well, we're getting her unstrapped outside. We lost light. It's dark. Moved into the shop here for you guys. But there you go. You want to see it a dyno on the machine? We dyno did it on the on the machine. Am I disappointed? No, not at all. It's a beautiful car. It's got a lot of history, all this and that. Yeah, I wish it, you know, made a little bit more horse, but hey, I can do that, right? So you guys bleep bloop down in the comments, what should we do with this thing? Leave it alone? Or does it need a big block? You know what I mean? Or something else. Uh, it's just one of those things. It's probably in reality, just a stock 400 with a giant cam that's way too big for the compression with an intake and a carburetor. But that's okay. That's hot rodding. Guy made something of what he had, had a lot of fun with it, took it to the track. It's got a lot of great history, like I said. I'm okay with that. And we could do something really cool with it. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate you very much. We'll see you soon.